The very first studies I got to do was at Harvard, um, and we were looking at what causes a Harvard student to rise to the possible, highest possible levels of happiness and success while they're there and once they leave. I did this huge study, it was a thousand students, one out of every six Harvard students, and at the end of it, I was so frustrated because almost nothing I did was predictive of their happiness and success. The most predictive thing was the very last thing I put in there, which I didn't even care about because it sounded too soft at the time, was their social connection score. It was the breadth, the depth, and the meaning in their social relationships. And it was a 0.7 correlation, almost a direct correlation with their levels of happiness and their success, both at Harvard and beyond. What we've learned since then is that the greatest predictor of long-term levels of uh, happiness is your social connection score. What makes this crisis so unique and such a high challenge is that it erodes oftentimes our ability to create social connection with one another, or at least a perception of it. In this research, it's actually the perception of social connection that matters, not the actual experience of the social connection. Because you can have somebody that's surrounded by 100 people at a university or in an organization, and they can feel extraordinarily lonely. You can also have somebody surrounded by two or three people or even meditating in a cave by themselves and feel deeply connected to the people within this world. It's the perception of social connection that matters. So what we're finding is that in the midst of this crisis, how we respond to it changes our levels of happiness and loneliness, which we had already seen before. A lot of the technology we have seen in the past, a lot of the ways in which our society has changed has led us to this place of independence where we feel like we can do things alone. Um, when I started, doing my work, uh, my TED talk was based upon the happiness advantage, which is if we can change your individual habits, your success rates will rise um, at, because your levels of happiness rise. It was all about you. And what we found was that there is this entire ecosystem of potential around us that we were missing. Uh, so I wrote this book called Big Potential, which was all about how we need to abandon that approach to happiness. Happiness cannot be a self-help movement. Because as soon as we make happiness about only the self, we miss out on the greatest predictor of our long-term levels of happiness, which is other people. So uh, I start the book with uh, a study that I find fascinating. These two researchers in Virginia discovered that if I'm looking at a hill that I need to climb in front of me, if I look at that hill by myself, my brain shows me a hill that is 10 to 20% steeper than a hill of the same height I perceive while standing next to someone who's gonna climb that hill with me. The inclusion of the belief that someone is gonna overcome that challenge with you changes what your brain sees, the challenge that your brain sees. So in the midst of this, it's very easy to see a large challenge, like a pandemic. And then we want to be able to see it by ourselves. We wanna overcome it. And as a result of that, it looms larger and larger as we're on Twitter or we're viewing the news by ourselves or we're in our houses by ourselves. What we need to do is feel connected to the people that are around us, to realize we're not the only ones overcoming this. Um, in the midst of this crisis, I've heard so many people talk about feeling lonely and crying. I've also seen the opposite occur. I've seen some of the deepest social connection pieces I have ever in our neighborhood. People are outside, they're walking within six feet of one another, but they're hungry for social connection and those uh, social collisions. So they're saying hi to everyone. They're talking, they're finding out how people are doing, they're connecting, they're finding out how the people that are living next to us who are older, how they're getting groceries, right? So they're finding out ways in which they can have a meaningful impact upon other people. I've had already three uh, uh, Skype and Zoom and FaceTime dates uh, with some of our friends that we couldn't do normally because we need childcare or they live in a different state. But we got these deep social connections with them. So what we're looking for is how do we feel more deeply connected? In my research, and one of the things that I always talk about in my talks and in my work is how do we start with uh, creating positivity at the individual level, but then how do we move it to creating a connection with other people as we do this? One of the ways to combine both of those approaches, and we've been doing this in the midst of this crisis, is the very first thing I do when I open my inbox, before I look at the statistics of what's going on overnight that have occurred in terms of uh, the number of cases that have increased, I write a two-minute positive email praising or thanking someone in my life, someone I haven't seen in a month, something I'm, someone I'm feeling disconnected to because I just haven't been close to them. I spend two minutes doing that, but when I open my inbox each day, I can't help but start my day in a day that makes me feel empowered, makes me feel more deeply connected, and I spend all day long thinking about how amazing I was for writing that email in the morning. My brain will experience the negative, it'll be faced with that, but at least gives me something to counterbalance that within my life, which is deeper social connection. So yes, I know 
many of us are going to experience this in different ways. I know personally, our family is going to take a financial hit because of this. But in the midst of this crisis, we want to gain on the other side. We're looking for that growth mindset. We want to look at what we will have on the back side of this. And what I think we're going to have is deeper social connection with the people around us as we've gone through this crisis together, as we've shared things together, as we've shared experiences, as we've had these opportunities to connect. And that email each morning is at the heart of creating that social connection as I start to get emails back and start to feel reconnected and start to call these people. And it creates a cycle of big potential of how we can link together to make that hill in front of us drop by 10 to 20%.